relations. And in Romania, it's even more. So again, sales, uh, the, the importance of sales drops, drops even further, but we see private donations uh, coming up. And I think Luwik uh, mentioned that uh, yesterday as well, that in, in Hungary and, and Romania, there's quite a lot of private sort of, uh, initiatives out there who are sort of eager to, 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 to uh, engage with, and, and, uh, with, with the phenomenon of sales, social enterprise, and apparently, uh, first and foremost, through grants. Um, okay, so that, that was all. Fact number two, or observation number two. So, observation three is really a question we asked. You know, how do you experience uh, difficulties accessing capital? And this was really more like a, a, a scale it question from one to seven. So one meaning really insufficient uh, the access to capital versus seven meaning you know very much uh, okay. And uh, this is what we get. Forty-four uh, percent uh, gave a score between uh, gave a score uh, below average. So they are not satisfied. Let's say. Um, but there's quite a bit of uh, uh, variation there across countries. And, and then, interestingly enough, it is uh, Hungary and UK that are in the sort of top league of uh, you know, unhappy social entrepreneurs, let's say, or social entrepreneurs that, that oh, I'm, I'm, I'm extrapolating here, but at least who, who say they, 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 they find uh, the access to capital insufficient, whereas in Romania and Spain that's actually far, uh, much, much lower. Um, are they really capital intensive? Well, here's, uh, here are averages in euro as far as startup capital is concerned. Um, you know, the maximum is UK with a startup capital of about 150,000 euros. Yeah. And uh, Spain, it's, it's about 93. And then uh, Sweden, 44. Uh, Hungary, Romania. Rather low. Yeah. So th this shouldn't be a surprise to you, right? We were talking about sir, may, most mainly services. Uh, Enterprises, so you know, it's not as if they need to invest in big manufacturing uh, plants and so forth. But these these figures are quite important, also, uh, as as I think um, Louis pointed out yesterday. You know, there's a lot of interest in sort of investing, in, you know, over 250,000 uh, euros in social enterprise. But if you look at these startup uh, sums, they're quite low. Yeah, so uh, I think this is where this is the market uh, which is which may be underserved if, if you, if you uh, kind of um, believe what, what, they, what they say. Um, and again, you know, in our statistics, we see 3.2% of capital is coming from investors and only 3.7% is coming from loans. Yeah? So that, that is very low. Uh, and if you contrast that with, the, with the, the amounts that people are requesting, there seems to be kind of big opportunities here. So are they profitable? So yes, they are. In the first round, 82% were. In the second round, 67% were. Um, actually, in UK and Spain, things seem to be quite stable. So the you know, same share that was making profits. Something happened in Hungary and Romania, and I look forward to asking Luik what exactly uh, happened there. But somehow, uh, may, yeah, I would need to find, mo find out more about the conditions there of why uh, so there's a big drop in, in, in the percentage of enterprises who, um, who, who made a, a surplus. Okay, then uh, I, I'm out of time, really. Uh, last, last point, really, is on uh, we have information about how much money they invest in innovations. Uh, the, the story here is really that it's quite low if you compare it to, to mainstream businesses. The amounts that they use, uh, that they, they invest uh, in, in monetary terms, is, is quite low. Um, but yet, when you look at the returns, they, that what they say in terms of how, how much did that innovation uh, change your revenues or how, to what extent did it change your social impact that you're making, actually those investments seem to be quite effective, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. So uh, the, the effectiveness of, of uh, investing or uh, investing in product and service innovation seems to be somewhat higher than investments in process innovations, but this may just be because uh, process innovations only pay off in, uh, in the medium term. We are looking at in, you know, one year on, onwards. Uh, whether there are any uh, significant returns. So, final slide really uh, uh, is about revenues. Uh, you must know that the size of these companies in our data set, set look very different depending on the country that we are investigating. Yeah, so we really have Spain at one extreme with quite a lot of um, uh, social enterprises. Uh, who are above, uh, who, who generate revenues of, of, above one um, 
one million euros. Yeah, and, and that obviously, you know, as you might expect, that percentage share uh, again drops as we look at, uh, you know, if we as we as we try to scan Romanian uh, and Hungarian enterprises. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Um, these are just the statistics. Statistics. They obviously beg more questions of why is it that we see these differences, uh, and that's what exactly what we're going to be uh, doing in the, in the coming months and years, probably. Um, uh, but of course, I, ho I just hope they kind of provoke some thinking from your end as well. Thanks. Thank you, Marike. And now I hand over to Laurent Ledoux from BMP Paribas. I will be very short since I was invited very late in this process. Uh, and basically I have one message. Uh, I'm the representative here of a big bank, like uh, Olivier was saying, and I definitely I don't think that we would fall according to UTE's standard in the category of ethical bank, uh, although I think we, we are doing our business as seriously as possible. Uh, but what I think is really that in this global economy, we, we need kind of both types of banks. I mean, the type of bank like um, Olivier's, Triodos, with, uh, as I understand, the largest uh, European ethical bank, we need, we need them. We definitely uh, need them. Um, but at the same time, they are very small. They are just a drop in the ocean uh, compared with the, the, the needs uh, of, of the whole uh, society. So, in a way, and this does not diminish in any sense their achievements, they are very focused on a niche market while we are serving the whole economy. Just to give you an example, uh, Olivier's uh, volume of, of loans in Belgium is uh, 400 and almost 500 million. My small business within the bank is, is a, a loan volume of 10 billion. And this does not include all kinds of other activities uh, that are managed within other departments uh, and that are financing renewable energy, etc. So it gives you just a, an idea of the different scale. And uh, this is not only important in terms of credits, but also in terms of deposits. Uh, we, uh, my team, we uh, serve clients in the social uh, sector and in the public sector. And definitely not all these clients want to invest their money in SRI products. We try to do as much as possible to sell them those products or to offer them, but they not, not all of them want that. Uh, and that's normal. The, the advantage of a, an ethical bank like the one of Olivier is to focus really on those type of products and type of clients that are uh, interested in those. But I guess we, we need both of them. And I'm thankful to, to Olivier because he helps me to promote better uh, ways of doing things within our bank uh, by giving the example. I was very happy when Olivier told me uh, last year that he was growing tremendously in terms of deposits during the crisis because I was able to tell them, uh, the management of the, of the bank, look, look at them, they are doing the right thing, uh, let's do it also. But of course it takes more time for uh, a bank like us to, 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 uh, to do that in the same way. And that's really what my, my, my core me message. Besides doing uh, the public banking and social banking that, uh, that, that, that I manage, we also start to launch different initiatives like MicroStart. I don't know if you've heard about it, but we've invested uh, a few millions in launching uh, various agencies, uh, first in Brussels, in Saint-Gilles and in Scarbeck, that will provide uh, microfinancing to uh, local small entrepreneurs. And in a way which wants to be both profitable bridging brackets, break even, let's say, uh, but in order to keep, sustain those type of uh, initiatives while other uh, microfinance uh, companies uh, have not the same uh, objectives and have, and have a different models. We try, as Ute was saying, try to blend or, or provide a totally different service to the economy and in the end, we cannot, I mean, it's not only the bank that needs to be more socially conscious, it's the whole society. Uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot change it all by ourselves. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Just one question. I'm not from Digimart, and probably if some colleagues of mine are there, they should know better than, uh, than me this question. Uh, what is the status of the social enterprises? Concretely, it was raised by the director of Triodos. In many countries, you have the ISBL, the, non, the, the non-profit organization, which cannot make profit. Uh, and my question is maybe naive, but are charities, foundation, uh, in your set of 500 and more social entrepreneurs or not? And this really matters or not concern, uh, in relation to the Salusi survey? This matters or not in your uh, regional and uh, national differences? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent question. And uh, it is uh, something that um, in our first round of surveying, we did not include specifically the question about what is your legal entity, what's your legal form, P- particularly because we didn't feel it would, well, it wasn't our s- selection criteria because we knew uh, our population takes on very different forms. Um, but we have included um, that question in the second round of data and we've made a, a list of different possible forms by country because, again, that differs quite a bit. Um, but then I have to disappoint you. <laughs> we haven't analyzed that data yet. So uh, we do have information about all those 500 enterprises, what, what exactly is their legal status. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be able to tell you now. You know, uh, uh, what I do know is that overall, um, I think it's about 6% are cooperatives. Uh, but then again, they can what specific legal entity that they take on uh, uh, quite, differs quite a bit. Uh, so we'll be able to tell you very soon. But yeah. Maybe just one comment, because um, in the UK it's quite often the case that they have not one legal entity but two. So you would have a charity arm and then a business trading arm. Uh, or a non-profit PLC and uh, business trading because they cannot uh, get grants for the business so, or kind of donations for uh, for the business, so they have to have a non-profit. And they also use that actively to cross-subsidize. So in a way, there is no easy answer to that question. But I think, in, yeah, it's probably around 20% charities. But, you know, again, that doesn't actually tell us very much because they come in all sorts of combinations. I think there is definitely a need to adapt legislation in order to to facilitate social businesses, Uh, at least in Belgium, and I know in many other European countries, there is a gap there. You must either be a charity with all the constraints in terms of management and governments that this implies, which are very heavy and which does not facilitate financing, or you are a for-profit company and it has also some drawbacks. So we need to find or to adapt legislation to enable social business. Uh, Somebody like Daniel Urstel, I don't know if you know, is really a a lawyer pushing for that, and I think we we need to try to to adapt legislation in in different countries accordingly. Just another comment on that, and it's it's that the financing definitely depends, or sort of the... Uh, financing has to be tailored towards uh, also the legal form because obviously that you cannot invest in equity of a non-profit organization um, so that is something that would be interesting to look at also in the in the solution data in the back uh, I have a question for Olivier but I guess maybe also I want to hear the comments of the other people you stress Uh, very heavily the importance of human capital on the level of the social entrepreneur, the social enterprises. Now, I assume that this applies also to Triodos, the bank itself. But then I'm always wondering how can you attract capable financial people if you do not follow the remuneration logic of of the financial industry? Well, we do follow the remuneration logic of the financial in- industry, in fact, up to the level of uh, managing directors and uh, deputy directors. But, but all other functions get the, the same uh, salary levels as in the, the, the classical banking industry, with the exception that we do not pay bonuses. That is one. And at the other hand, we do not have uh, trading uh, departments or uh, that kind of uh, activities where in general you find the highest uh, pace in the in the banking industry. Now, how do we attract uh, managing directors? Um, on Wednesday, I, I was at another seminar, and someone